I got a jet. You gonna take off towards us? Yeah, you take off into the wind. Today's episode is made possible through the support of the wonderful Scott Savage. Thank you, sir, for being a part of this, and thank you to everyone on the Patreon who's gotten involved and helped me to make all these videos. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, guys. Hi there, guys, and welcome back to the shop. Today, we get to play with an aeroplane. This, well, it had a rough day. This is one of the worst damn airplanes I've ever had. I have had this airplane for about four years. This airplane has spent less than five minutes in the air in four years. I think I've flown it three times. And that's cumulative, less than five minutes in the air. This is a twitchy, angry, just not a pleasant thing to fly but I'm like Charlie Brown with the football on this one. I just, I keep coming back. I keep coming back because I'm gonna make it work. This is not the first time I've had to glue this plane back together. And a lot of people watch my videos where I crash planes because I like posting crash videos. There's, there's people out there who can fly model aircraft so much better than I can. Check out Mr. Steel, Quad Mover, Joshua Bardwell, you watch any of his videos, you're going to learn something today. And I am a decent pilot. I'm okay. But I'm nowhere near at the level of those guys. But I crash better than anybody on YouTube. Like, I, I can crash a plane. <laughs> so, people watch my crashes and they're like, oh my god, it's destroyed. It's, it's usually not because I fly foam. This is all just styrofoam. And one of the first rules of model aircraft is that takeoffs are optional. Landings aren't. And long before, the, long before you get good as a pilot, long before you get good at flying model aircraft, you will get very good at fixing model aircraft. So I want to make a video today just showing how to resurrect this thing because I have a pile of parts here on the desk. Not all of them are going to go back on the plane. But this is going to be able to fly again in like a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the glue in it. So here's, here's some of the process and just some things to know. Because I try to get people excited about engineering and science and model aviation and all that jazz. So it's probably a good idea if I show people that it's okay to break your toys. So let's take a look inside here. I'm gonna, gonna zoom right on in. Check this out, I got a remote control. Oh. By the way, every time you see me look over here, there's a monitor on the wall over there that's showing me that camera up there. So we're gonna zoom right in. I had somebody asking about that. He's like, why do you always turn to your right? What are you, what are you looking at over there? I'm like, well, there's a big screen on the wall. The room is kind of screwy in the layout. So like I got screens stuck up on walls so that I can see what the hell I'm doing. So in here, let's talk about some of the parts that make this work. First off, there's a really big turbine engine right here. And this isn't a jet engine, except it is a jet engine, kind of. It's not the jet engine like you're used to with like you suck, squeeze, bang, blow. There's no fire in this. You can get jet engines this tiny that, you know, run on jet fuel and shoot fire and get really, really hot, but they'd melt the styrofoam and they cost like five grand a piece for a cheap one. Um, I'd love one if somebody wants to send one in, that'd be cool, but way outside of my budget. 
So what most of us use is this. This is called an EDF. It's an electric. See a little electric motor in the back? Right there, electric motor. That's called an outrunner motor. This is an electric ducted, here's the duct, fan. Now, can I, can I get you down in there to see it? Maybe? See the fan? There's a fan in there. See that? And that is technically a turbine. It's a, a fan in a tube and it's a turbine. But it's not like a turbojet engine like with fire in that. This is just, it's a hairdryer without the heating part. It moves a lot of air. That's its whole job. It sucks air in the front and squirts it out the back and that's it. So that rotor housing, that duct, is only 70 millimeters in diameter. So it's really tiny, which is why they call this the 70 Sport Jet. Not for that wicked 70s font, because that's totally an 80s font, eh, 70s. But it's the size of your thing. So if you go onto like Horizon Hobby or Motion RC or something like that, and you see jets, they always have the number. That number is how big around the fan is, and or how big the duct is. And that's how much air you can move and how big the plane is proportionally. 70, kind of tiny. They make smaller. You can get Horizon Hobby sells the Ultra Micro Series and they've got little, uh, uh, yeah, it sounds like a Dremel on crack. So to control this, we have this here. This is an ESC, an electronic speed controller. And all that is, is a three-phase motor driver. This is a three-phase brushless DC motor. And it takes the PWM signal from the uh, flight receiver, which is here. That's the receiver I'm using on this one. So one of these, uh, usually the, the first channel heads off. That's probably off to a bind plug. So one there will be my throttle. And that'll go over to the ESC. And on the other side of the ESC is the big main battery connector. And it's just a motor driver and a giant electric power train. So all the other stuff, all the servos, the things that move, the control surfaces on the wings, all that are powered off the flight controller. They, it, battery power comes into the ESC. The ESC sends a little bit off to the flight controller. And yeah, because the servos in that use very, very, very tiny amount of power. But the engine is using like 99.999% of all available power. So that's just... That's the basic parts. There really isn't a lot to this. It's a bunch of styrofoam with a few control services, a flight computer. Um, this one's fancy. I got retracts, which might perhaps actually retract again. We got to dig into there and there, there's going to be some vice work before we're done. So flight computer, this, this is all pretty good. We're missing a chunk, but that chunk goes here. So we can glue that back. We're just going to cram the flight computer back up the hole it came out of. Now I see a screw sticking out down here. I'm going to, all right, see this is, the problem with working on airplanes is no easy way to hold it. So we're gonna, I gotta get that under there. That's my antenna. If you think it's hard to hold a model airplane and work on it, you got to see how interesting it gets when you're trying to do it and show it to a camera at the same time. That gets a little exciting. All right, so this... How the hell did you even get out there? You don't go on the outside, you go on the inside. Why are you on the outside? You're gonna... You can't be out there. So we'll take that apart. Why? What the hell? That's right up front. That's got to go up to the landing gear. Oh, that's why. Because this isn't the front landing gear. This is the back landing gear. And this has to go in there. That's got to go. Okay, so that is supposed to plug in there. All right. Well, that's easy to fix. That's, yeah. Okay, we'll just stick that roughly where it goes for now. We're going to have to come back to this but that's gonna tuck up the hole and that'll go in there and get, okay, okay. Makes sense now. It's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, so we're gonna stick, where do you go? What is that? Flaps. Flap. 
See, before I can tuck it all up, I gotta make sure all the wires are where they need to be. And this, I got a thing here, just has flaps hanging out, not hooking to anything. So that tells, ah, look, here, flap. Put that tag back up the wire. You gotta make sure your colors line up. There's three wires on each one of these. One is power, one is ground, and one is data signal. So that can't really suck into the hole anyway. Oh, 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 this is gonna get ugly. Okay, let's pull all those cables back and stuff you forward because that's gonna have to lay flat in the thing. It's amazing how delicately I treat this given that I lawn darted this thing out of the sky at 100 miles an hour. Now I'm like, oh, I gotta be careful with it. You don't really have to be that careful with it. My big fear is breaking off the vertical stabilizer. Are you gonna come out? Yeah, it'll work. And I need something hard. You'll do. Because I want to tease this back out. That's a usual application for a pair of tweezers, but it'll do. Okay, so we got everything stuffed up the hole. Some parts of this are super fussy and delicate, and some parts of this you just literally cram things in the hole. So that's how we're going. Now I don't know if that's gonna screw in now and I've sheared off my pins at the back. So this means we're gluing it. Yep, this is the time where we glue the plane together. Normally, you don't actually glue this part of the plane to the main body, but in this instance, because we've lost all the screws, like they've the, there's usually a pair of shear pins at the back and a screw at the front. Shear pins are broken off and the screws ripped out. So that means, that means this plane will fly again, but it's only gonna crash one more time. So we're gonna grab some gap filling medium glue. And we're gonna fill some gaps. <laughs> so we're gonna put a little bit of this here. And we're gonna do a run of that up here. And do a big run of that in here. You can do a lot with glue. We're gonna glue that down there. And some glue across here and here and there. Now that we've just put half a bottle of glue in the damn thing, we're gonna get all our wires stuck up safe out of the way because once this goes in, it's in, it's in, in. Okay, so that is gonna sit like that for a very long time. And I'm going to reinforce that with some hot glue as well. So really all I do at this point is just hold it for a minute. It's thrilling video. I'm just going to sit here while my eyes burn from the glue fumes. 
So I'm going to reach in here and see if I can get the radio. Tease that out forward. Oh, you're going to be a bitch the whole way down, aren't you? Okay, so we're glued on there. Now we have an electrical fight to have because in teasing this out, I pulled a plug out and it's not an important part plug, it's just for the throttle. I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna glue the floppity tail on first because that's, that's being kind of jank. Now the tail isn't completely disconnected. We did lose a wire though that doesn't appear back here at all now. What's, what's holding that on? My guess is that one screw. Let's take that one screw off. That's a lot easier. So we've got a lead back here for the elevator, but not the rudder. So there's a, oh, there it is. I see it. That makes me feel better. Okay, there's our other lead. Will you reach? Yeah, you'll reach, okay. Oh my, white's on the bottom, that's on the bottom, brown, okay, cool. Okay, that's reconnected. And this all looks, so we totally blew out that screw. And this is a very highly loaded part of the plane. So we're gonna hot glue this down because it's also in that we get to crash one more time category of parts. Okay. Ooh, we broke apart back here. That whole thing's off of there. We'll just fill that up. Plug that back in. We'll run this right the way down. Fill that in. Cross back. And then we'll just drop the whole thing right up in there. And let all that hot glue do its thing. Cool. Good, solid connection. I'm gonna do some at the back here. All right. That glue gun sucks, but... All of a sudden, it starts to look like an airplane, huh? We got a couple electrical fights to have, but all in all, it's gonna be okay. So now we got to get the front on it, and this is really bad. So we're going to take that right off. Now this jet is a very simple, like as jets go, a very simple, stupid model. It doesn't have any of the like the fancy safe system or any of that, that that doesn't exist on this jet. All right, so how do I take you up? Because that's got to get bent back. Let's take a moment. I got a fancy little widgie bit here. I got to get power for it though. So I got a servo tester, but I got to power it. So I'm going to go find me a power source for a servo tester.
and I'll be back. All right, so I got a battery here, a little 3S 11.1 volt 450, so it's a 3S 450. And I have a old jankety ESC. Now this ESC is the exact same as the one in the plane. We've got our three motor leads out, a battery lead in, and a power lead. Well, this is a bi-directional lead. Um, so what I can do is plug this into my little tester. And I don't have a motor on here, but I don't need a motor for this. So servos work through a PWM signal. I'm going to zoom this out so you can see it. So I'm just using this ESC with any flight battery to power my little servo tester. And now when I move this, there we go. Oh, that's all you got. See, there's your problem. So that's bent. So that's, that tells me that when that's, that should be all the way down. Okay. So now that I know that, I can unplug power to this and I can take this apart and bend this back the way it wants to be. I can't do that in the airplane because if I try to bend this, I'm just gonna break it off the styrofoam. But I think I can just simply take it apart. So there's two things in here. You can see there's the servo that moves the landing gear, the retractable landing gear, and we're going to take that out. And then there's the servo that does steering, that, that moves through the ball links. So I think I can just lift this right out, if you'll let me go. I may have to... Ooh! We're just stripped out on the servo too. Man, nothing's working in here. Well, if that's the case, let's pull the servo back. Pull this, no, nope, you can't both move. And pull the servo back. That's because it's loose, that's why. That can go back way far. And that disengages that. And we can wiggle it just a little bit. Unplug that. And this will pop up through the hole, really? Well, you went through there once. I am a man of grace and poise. Okay. So we know that has to go through there. And if I can't find the hole you fit through, I will make you fit through a new hole. There you go, okay. So this is our Jank Nasty. It looks like there would be a set screw on there, but there's no set screw in there. And there's, it's all one. So do you come out? What holds that in there? I just see a little solid block with a rod into it. I don't want to just muscle that. I can muscle on that though. All right, let's 
put this in the bench vise. That alone took a fair bit of bend out of it, so let's grab a pair of pliers and see if we can bend this up a little bit. Because anything's better than where I was at. Well, that's better. I can't really get it perfectly straight like I could, but I'd have to put so much stress on this that... Ah, screw it. Let's just bend it. All right. That's, that's good. All right. So let's put this back in the nose, which means first cramming that back out its hole, which it does not want to go through. Okay, you're outside. And then this goes back in here. Thus, and before I have that fight, I'm going to tease that through the hole. Okay. Cool. Tighten this. I've completely pooched my steering trim, but that's not really that big a deal. That's all back together. And now we just put these back in the holes. Now we can come out at high speed, full on RAR, but we go in gently. And we've got the landing gear in there. Cool. And see, this was completely mangled and all bent to hell, but you just take a couple minutes. It's not a big deal. We actually had to put things in a vise and bend them, which is a little intense for model aircraft, but it's just a piece of steel. It's not, it's not rocket science. Okay, maybe it is kind of legit aerospace engineering, but on a much smaller scale. Look at that. Now it's in, now let's test it and see if it works. So I'm gonna plug our landing gear lead in here. If you're ever wondering in the future when you hook this up, you've got positive in the middle, signal is the yellow wire, and negative is the brown or black wire, but positive is always in the middle. So we'll plug this in. And now, when we turn the knob on the servo actuator... Ha! Look at that! And... And in flight, this will... Well, in flight, it'll be like that. And then for landing... Cool! We fixed a part. Not bad, huh? And we, of course, will leave the landing gear down because we're going to glue that on the front next. But I can't glue it right now 
because as I can tell from the egregious aroma coming off of this thing, um, our glue is not yet dry. So I'm going to, I'm going to go eat lunch and wait for the glue to dry. And when we come back, we'll tackle the next step. But right now it looks a hell of a lot more like an airplane than when we started, eh? And don't forget, we got to glue that, uh, the other landing gear on the bottom because that's just sitting in there. I'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back and glue is dry. Plane is solid and, and looks almost like a plane. We're cool there. We got the live team back. And from the sounds of it, Joe is sharpening something. Nope, not me. No, oh, fat man. Someone's eating. Are you causing problems? Probably causing problems. Okay. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm up against here. I have right there, that is the receiver. And in this particular airplane, there, it's electrically problematic. Because the only way all the wires will reach is if you cram the receiver down its butt. So, the receiver will hang out there and be okay, and it actually sits cocked 90 degrees, which is really weird for a receiver. Um, and it's probably not how you're supposed to do it, but it's how I did it. Maybe that's why the plane don't fly worth a damn, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any gyroscopic stabilization. This doesn't have AS3X running or anything like that. This is a pure, raw, five-channel airplane. Five? One two, three, four, five, six, six channel plane. Um, Cause I got flaps and uh, retracts. But my problem is I got to get this plug into that hole and the receiver moves. And it's really hard to because it's a friction fit for the plugs. And and when they say friction, they mean they mean all the friction. Yeah. Dog will tell you all about it. So my last real problem is getting that in there. Then I gotta figure out what this do as well. I think, well, we can test that. So I got, th I got four wires to contend with. One I know is throttle, like that's definitely throttle. This is definitely a bind plug. And then I got these two, which I'm pretty sure are gonna coincide to these two here. Ooh, we're missing a big chunk of, pl oh, hey, look, a big chunk of plastic is still sitting on the table. Wow, okay. All right, so I'm going to... Oh, it looks like an airplane all of a sudden. All right, all I got to do really is get that one plug figured out and get it in the hole. And if I can do that, we're set. But it's going to be a fight. This may require the judicial use of bad words. So I got to get these together and down. Okay, so that'll let me get a good grip on that. And then I got a... It's the only pair of long fingers I got, isn't it? So we're gonna grab that. As firmly as I dare. Our angles are up. Now I just gotta get that in that hole. Oh, 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 I got it. I think there's an easy way to test. Can you grab me the radio upstairs? Looks like that, says DX9. 
And a uh, battery. What size? 4S would be fine. All right, so while mouse runs and sorts that out, we're gonna put the front on. Okay. That's a big ugly. Hey, that's what I need, thank you. All right, are we up to temp? Don't I have a nice one of these that's cordless? No. I thought I had a nice one that's cordless. Oh, that's a battery. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to look at this and see how it wants to be. That's everything that's touching. All right. I'm going to grab a Sharpie and mark the spots where the hole begins because I want to put glue on all the stuff that's going to touch right when I put it in, but I don't want to put glue on the stuff that isn't going to touch yet. So we just line this up, put it all together, and then mark here and there. Cool. So that's, that's my no glue area. Cause then we gotta do this piece last. All right, so now we slide this in quickly. And we're just gonna hold this for a minute. This is a hot glue joint, so it sets up very quickly. And we're just gonna give that a little love and support. It'll be cool. And now it sits like a plane. Look at that. It looks like an airplane. It's almost, oh shit, that's not quite ready. <laughs> We're almost there. Let me make sure I don't glue the strap in place. And we can set this up like this while it cures. It just needs to cool for a minute. And while it's sitting like that, I can get a look here and see very clearly exactly where that big chunk of plastic has to go. But I need my, yeah, that's still tacky. I need my, my nose firewall seam to be good to go before I try this but that's gonna go right there. Okay, I think we're, we're cooled off enough. So I'm gonna put this big chunk. I gotta make a cradle really bad. I need, I need a cradle for working on model aircraft. That's true. All right, so we're gonna put this bottom piece in and this is gonna be just a mountain of hot glue. So we're all the way down that side and all the way down this side and all the bottom there. So I'm going to just unplug this and bring it right over. We're going to run that right the way down there. All up under here. All of this, all of this, all of this. That's a lot of hot glue. And then I'm gonna stick that in there and kind of mold it into place. Now we'll fill these gaps in a second, but first I just wanna get it in there. Cool thing about hot glue is it works really well as RC airplane Bondo. All right. I'm gonna hold that a second. Can you grab me another stick of glue? Mm -hmm. Thank you, got it. So we just put a lot of heat energy in there and with hot glue, you just gotta wait for it to cool down. You got your end? 
Now watch out parts of that get warm. You good? Okay, you got that, I got this. And we're just gonna kind of weld that in there. Okay. And now we just hold it. So we're going to hot glue that into place. There. We're just going we're literally just going to hot glue it in. Okay. And then we'll run the wire up and through um, and stuff it and that'll be relatively easy and we should be okay for alignment I think. Can I reach there? I can reach enough there. So we're just gonna... Flood the cavities. Okay, so that's on. And then we insert that into there. And now we have landing gear sorted out. So that's going to take a minute to cool off because there's a lot of glue there. This, this takes quite the load. And while it's doing that, Okay, so we have the old tape off. All right, I will hold the plane for a moment. Could you please get me a roll of scotch tape? So, while you're doing that, I can tuck the wire in the seam built into the bottom of the fuselage. Blenderm? No, that's hinge tape. Alright, we're gonna use the Blenderm then. Bring it here. It's not what we want for this, but it's what we have. Now this is, this is hinge tape. I can give you bright and colorful electrical tape. Nope. Okay, take that off. And all this does is holds the wire safely in the thing. So, it's pretty easy there. All right. No, I'm not gonna worry about it. All right. So we come down there, to there. All right, electrically the plane is done. 
mechanically the plane is done, actually, I think. Let's find, oh, no, I got to do these two wires. So I don't know which is which. Okay, this is the landing gear. So that's steering, and steering needs to go to rudder. So I'm just going to take a wild guess and plug this in. And if th the rudder works right, we're cool. Like the, the nose wheel should turn with the rudder. Let's test it. Wow, I've had this plane a long time. Okay, we're going to lock off our throttle. Clear prop. Aileron works like it should. That's supposed to be flaps. But okay, that's not flaps. That's flaps in a weird place to put it. Flaps work now. Hey. All right. And just out of curiosity. Turbine test. I think this plane might fly again. I'm locking off the throttle for safety. I'm going to plug this way down into here. And that should do all of our landing gear on the weird switch, but it'll work. Now let's stick the battery down in here. That's a lot of battery. Okay. So testing the landing gear. It's a little bent, but it'll do. So this landing gear is stuck because it's bent. So I got to bend that forward a little bit. But aside from that, it's a plane and it would at this point fly. It just have a little bit of a dragon landing gear and we can even put the canopy back on. Everything's tucked in nice and safe. I'm going to put some tape over those. Look at that. It's a jet once again. Don't mind the hot glue stalagmites in the air intake. Those just add character. I'm going to fill in some gaps on the side and I got to fix this landing gear, which is going to be a job. Oh yeah, that's bent way up. So how do we do that? How do I bend that rod? Outside of the air. Okay. I can't easily take it out. Like that's that's a job. And I'm not going to get anything by taking it out. So what we're going to do is grab this pair of pliers. And I had a big, yeah. We've got this. We can hold that. I think that did it. If it didn't, it's really close. Take the canopy off. We're just going to do this upside down on the bench. We're still tuned into that plane. They 
I'll go in. Ha <laughs> ha. Beautiful. Tons of room. This airplane is ready to fly. It's uh, a couple pieces lighter than it was at its last takeoff. And I'm gonna put some tape over this right now while I'm thinking about it. But we have successfully repaired an airplane from extensive crash damage. Now I don't know exactly how long this took because I don't have a clock running and uh, I went to lunch. So astute viewers because I always have a couple, will notice the clock right there, but you have to take into account that in the middle of this, I had to wait for a bunch of glue to dry, so I took off for like, I don't know, half an hour to go eat lunch. So, the actual length of the video is closer to the actual amount of time it took me to fix this, which I'm gonna say probably wasn't all that bad, less than an hour. Just a few minutes. So, the Rebel 70 is ready to fly again. And in a video that you will see very soon, I will take this out and crash the damn thing all over. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. I will take this out and crash the damn thing all over again, just for you guys. But I got a sneaking suspicion that that was the last time I'll be able to really repair it. The next major crash this has will be the last major crash this has, but that's okay because the Rebel 70 is slated for retirement. I am replacing it with an F-16, which you'll see in the next video. So thank you for hanging out with me. I hope this was a good lesson and it's okay to break your toys because you can fix your toys. That's what being a maker, nerd, geek, creator is all about is having the courage to break your toys because that's how you actually get better at flying things. You gotta be comfortable in what happens if I crash. This is why I fly foam. I only own one Balsa airplane and I've never flown it. Because this stuff, you can glue it back together, it takes abuse, it takes a beating, and you can always fix it. So thank you for hanging out with me. Don't be afraid to break your toys. You guys have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time. Mm.